Hi, I'm Rebecca Schwindler, the Chair of the Historic Preservation Board in Lafayette, Colorado. In this video, we're going to tell you how we're preserving our historic Coat mural and what kinds of information we're learning from the mural. The mural actually consists of two different elements. One is a painted banner advertising Pat and Gar's Highway Bar, and the other underneath that is a very large advertisement for Coca-Cola. These date to the very late 1940s or the early 1950s. Construction workers uncovered the mural in June 2015 prior to demolishing the wood building at 201 North Public Road in Old Town Lafayette. And the mural had been covered for almost 60 years with asbestos siding, so it was a really exciting discovery for the town. Based on overwhelming support from the community and the city, a lot of different groups came together to save the mural. So we cut it out of the south wall of the building, framed it for structural support, put it on a flatbed truck, and then drove it down to Lafayette's nearby fire station number one. And it sat here in the fire station since September 2015 so that it could be conserved and then protected and then reinstalled on public road. So to learn more about the history of the mural, you can go to the city's special webpage, cityoflafayette.com forward slash mural. And we would love to get your stories about the mural, your stories about Pat and Gar's Highway Bar. If you have any historic photographs of the building or the mural, that would be fantastic. You can go to the same webpage, again, that cityoflafayette.com forward slash mural to share that information with us. Hello, Lafayette. I'm Sally Martin. I chair the Urban Renewal Authority, but in this case, I'm speaking to you as the co-chair of the mural committee. Early last summer, while doing the asbestos mitigation, workers uncovered this magnificent mural that you see behind me. It turned out to, that it was a, an impressive mural, and the community started a conversation with members of the arts community, members of the historic preservation community, and the community at large in coffee shops and other meetings. The decision was, let's, let's make every effort that we can to, to preserve this wonderful piece of our history. You know, Lafayette takes very seriously its preservation ethic and value. And this is a magnificent effort to do that. A lot of work transpired uh, between the city and the citizens group to get us to this point. And as you can well imagine, there is a financial cost uh, to preservation, a long value held by people in Lafayette. And now we're asking for your investment in this project. Won't you help Lafayette save this mural? To do that, and for more information, please go to the City of Lafayette website. So go to cityoflafayette.com slash mural. You will find a place on that website to link to Arts Lafayette where you can make a tax-deductible contribution. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts and we hope very much to have this mural installed uh, by the end of the summer. Thank you. So now I'm going to turn it over to Deborah Ewell, the professional paint conservator who's working on the mural, and she's going to tell you about her methods and her really fascinating discoveries. Deborah? Hello, my name is Deborah Ewell. I'm a wall paintings conservator. So I specialize in preserving large scale paintings like this oak sign. This is a real rare sign to find in this kind of condition because it's been preserved all of these years. It's really exciting because the colors haven't faded and they're so vibrant and we have most of the paint, original paint on the surface of this really stable hardwood. The building was in really pretty good condition when they cut it and brought it over here. So our task has been to be able to preserve all of the original paint and make sure that it is well adhered to the wood siding. Um, and in order to do that, we went through the process of cleaning the paint surface. We had to be really gentle with the paint surface because uh, there was a lot of paint that was not attached very well to the wood. And then after we went through a dry cleaning process and then cleaning it with an aqueous solution, we um, inject an adhesive behind the paint, between the paint and the wood, and then heats 
set it using a small iron to make sure that the paint is well adhered to the wood. And then our final process is to apply a varnish layer on top of the paint so that it'll protect it from UV and keep it from fading and, and allow it to be preserved in this vibrant state that we see it in as long as possible. Coke had signs like this made in a lot of small towns around the country. It's most likely that a local sign painter painted this Coke sign along with the uh, bar sign above it. Um, these, this would have been called a privilege sign, so Coca-Cola would have asked the business owner if they could put this advertisement on their wall and in return, Coca-Cola would pay for a sign to be made for their business. So in order to keep the Coca-Cola signs with the standard trademark look that Coca-Cola had, they gave artists a book that would give them a template to work off of so that they made sure that the Coke bottles and the, the branding would be identical um, throughout the country when they were making these signs. So what we found on this sign was that there is evidence of pounce marks around the bottle that are especially evident in the bottle cap and in the lettering. And the pounce marks would have been little uh, dots that were um, created from holes made in a, they would have had a, a large scale sketch of this bottle. There's an indication that the highway bar sign may have been painted by a different hand than the Coca-Cola sign. Just because the, the lettering is very different and the way that the paint was applied seems to have been a different approach. Um, so on the Coca-Cola sign, the, the, paint, the artist put on um, a thin layer of lead white paint underneath every part of the sign and then they blocked in where the lettering would be so in the coca-cola drink coca-cola they would have made a, a large white box and then in it's the real thing they would paint a large yellow box and then actually the lettering isn't painted letter by letter it's painted in the negative areas outside the letters to create the letters using the red paint and this allowed them to be able to paint the, all of the red paint at once and have the red paint be consistent in its opacity and the color when it was being laid down for the sign. And for sign painters, it was often just kind of faster to be able to, to paint that way, kind of negatively around the letters to create the letters. So when we 
first came to look at the sign, the sign was visibly very dirty on its surface. And you can take a look at an uncleaned area here in the middle of these green markers. So there was visible dirt on the surface and you can see how the flaking paint is actually cupped and lifting off the surface. So we had to be really careful when we cleaned it to make sure that we didn't lose any additional paint. And Lisa will actually demonstrate that for us. So first, what we would do is dry clean the area. And we're using a really soft brush so that, again, we're not moving any flakes across the surface and losing them. So one of the other things that you'll see on the surface beside the paint is a lot of these tacks that were used to hold up the tar paper for the siding that was laid on top of the sign. And then there's also a number of nails that you'll see throughout the surface that we're holding that siding on. So we're going to be removing those after all the paint is well adhered to the surface. Um, we're going to remove all the hardware that came after the sign was painted. After we dry cleaned the surface, we would wet clean it and just move the dirt off the surface, the paint surface, without moving any of the paint chips. So we sprayed um, ammonium hydroxide uh, across the surface of sign and then used a brush to further move the dirt out of all the recesses. This is Lisa Capano, who's doing our demonstration for today. She is also a painting conservator and works in private practice out of Westminster. And Lisa and I both worked on a ghost sign from 1957 up in Old Town, Fort Collins. So it was from a similar era that the colors had faded and there was a lot more paint loss than what we see here. So we were really quite excited to see how brilliant the colors were on this sign and how well intact it was for the age that it is. So our third step in the cleaning process is to go back and remove any dirt and grime on the surface that won't, that doesn't want to come off very easily. What Lisa is demonstrating right now is the beginning of our consolidation process where we inject an aqueous adhesive between the paint and the wood. And we have to get it underneath because a lot of the paint is actually raised from the wooden surface. So we try to go in through all of the loss, the areas of paint loss and and inject it so that it'll it'll be squeezed in behind the paint. So, so after the adhesive is dried, then we heat up the surface with our tacking iron, and then use our hand to apply pressure so that it stays the paint stays in place as it cools. And 
after all the paint is heat set, then we'll come back and apply a final coat of our varnish over the surface that'll protect the surface from UV. We've actually varnished up to this level, and you can see on the coat bottle that the colors are much more saturated, so it kind of deepens the colors and increases the contrast compared to before it's consolidated and varnished. So this is unvarnished and this is varnished.